Come to the door, guys. Send whoever whoever lives here down to the door. We're not leaving. This offense, if you were to plead guilty or be found guilty, is death or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Disclaimer. The content in this video may include discussions and depictions of real and disturbing true crime events. As such, it may be sensitive for some viewers. Proceed with caution when watching this video as it may contain images, descriptions, or discussions that some viewers may find distressing or triggering. Your discretion is advised. As I was taking preliminary peeks into the whole Idaho 4 thing, I kind of got hooked. Check it out, I already have some beyond the narrative. Turns out I'm not ready to talk about the murders yet. Not ready to talk about the roommates yet. Well, sort of. I'm ready to talk about the residents of the place getting just a wee bit arguably harassed and threatened by the police before the murders. They made contact with the place and they claim to already know that it's a sorority off-campus house. They further that up by asking the boys, is this an off-campus sorority house? And by asking them, are the residents girls or guys? Here are some preliminary peaks and highlights from some of that material. Long Crime puts out a 45 minute video. It has three body cam perspectives and it's pretty disturbing a lot of the things that are said. And keep in mind during these preliminary peaks, the audio and the video that you'll be seeing have a scene including the corporal and the sergeant as well as other officers and other trainee officers. As it appears that these guys, the corporal and the sergeant, are responsible for the training units in the field. Now, think about this, the fact that this corporal and this sergeant both wound up in Exhibit A. They found the knife sheath and were the original ones to pin Brian. They were also there on the scene that day, as they say at 4 o'clock when they came in and later found the knife sheath. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But if I were these parents and I was seeing them treat my girls like this, I would certainly be worried about the way they were going to treat the investigation. <laughs> Whoever lives here needs to come talk to us or we're going to start doing a lot more than just deal with noise. Yeah, just tell them to come to the front door. We'll deal with the noise complaint and we'll leave. Yep, thank you. Stupid fucking idiots. They are not breaking any laws. Threatening to escalate the situation in order to coerce a person to open the door could be seen as an attempt to intimidate or bully the person into giving up their constitutional rights. Furthermore, threatening to escalate the situation could be seen as an abuse of power and a violation of the police officer's duty to protect and serve the public. It is the responsibility of law enforcement to respect and uphold the constitutional rights of all citizens, and threatening to escalate the situation in the scenario could be seen as a breach of that responsibility. Yeah. yeah, for the most part. They're scared. Oh my god! Her birthday, they've also taken uh, measures to protect their right to sue in the event that something comes up. On the right-hand side is Steve Gonzalez and his daughter Kaylee, and they've also protected their right to sue. City of Moscow, maybe even other entities as well, in case after the gag order is lifted and they start to find out all the things that happened and maybe shouldn't have happened, they have the right to protect their right to sue. And so they filed that. Moscow mm -hmm. police, we've all been doing as much, you know, reporting work as we can, despite the fact that there is this gag. And we've discovered that the Moscow police have had one of their own, um, you know, investigated with internal affairs. Do you mm -hmm. see any 
you know, connection potentially to a tort claim uh, with respect to that? It's almost like an insurance policy. Who made that call um, to be, uh, to be, to be uh, it's part of our investigation still and when we get ready. What's your name? Zana. Zana, do you live here? Yes. Yeah. It is cleaned and there's no date set for demolition, according to you Team feel Idaho Property Management. confident in the police investigation and the people investigating? I, I do not feel confident, and that's why I push the envelope and say a little bit more. I hate to be that guy, but, um, you know, there's a job to do for every, everybody has a job and a role to play in this. A home no more is going to be at some point demolished and turned into something else seems like they're trying to er erase it. An interesting way it's being dealt with. Okay. Hi, this is Oscar Walsh, Mark, Lee, Ben. Maddie, one second, we've been rolling on this phone. We're only here for a noise complaint. Come to the damn door. Frustrating, like, we'll figure out who lives here eventually. Yeah. I'm gonna go around back. I'll be on the cover. Yeah. Oh, you want that? Oh, hey. don't come to the door. What's that? Well, they don't come to the door. I mean, it's fine. Right, there's the issue. Yeah, probably just leave, but. <clears throat> These are all, they're all mostly students, so yeah. the campus officers can figure out who lives here and then. Honestly, it's a lot worse for them if they don't come to the door. Pretty frequently. Like, if they, yeah, campus will, if, yeah, if students get in trouble, they will, um, if they get in trouble at campus, it's actually, honestly, for, like, minor stuff, campus will hang them, like, suspend them or kick them out altogether or lose all your financial aid. Like, it's pretty serious, so. They've had some. Several kids like get super hammered, and fall off balconies over the years and stuff, and die. So they take it pretty seriously. Oh! White claws. White claws. They're gonna be so angry at me. They're cold too, man. <laughs> Banned property. Moscow one five seven. Do we have any recent involvements at uh, eleven twenty two Queen? You can play stupid games if you want to. There's a party somewhere. Right? Yeah, their music got yeah. real quiet. Real fast. Yeah. Real fast. Sigma is the only one that's yeah. here. Yep. They said they're going to another party. I wonder if there's another Greek party somewhere. Probably. Because they were, they were taking off all Yeah, they were going somewhere. But hey, they abandoned it. Yep. But guess what? Start dumping alcohol. Yep. <laughs> they abandoned the property. I like it when they abandon their shit. Yep. More in there. Exactly. Oh. Street youths. White claws? White claws. Nice. I hate when I leave my white claws. Oh, they're cold too. Man. Yeah, these are cold. Whew. Oh, God. Oh, an open one. Hello. Do that. Learn that from a college kid. Yep. All right, so.
Yep. Okay. I just dropped the work on the Maddie, one second. You should have the on this stomach. Uh, well, that's all the way over there. Just everyone fucking ran away? They not gonna come back? Do you think I'm gonna leave? Who's the owner uh, or who lives here? Um, I can go get them real quick. Okay, thank you, please. Hey, who's the owner uh, or who lives here? Um, I can go get them real quick. But the officers keep singling out the owners and making sure that who's ever home contacts the owners when the owners refuse to come to the door. Now, a lot of the news reported this one as a party being thrown while the owners aren't home, but you can actually see one of the owners who was dubbed a surviving roommate by the police is answering the door during this one. Not only that, but she actually exercises her constitutional rights to no longer continue this contact with the police and she closes the door in their face. Now it appears that Moscow PD is supposed to give you a warning before they actually give you a citation and the girls may have figured this out because they send someone else down to answer the door. And the cops threaten these guys with saying that they're at home without any permission for no reason at all. There's no reason to assume that they're not invited guests and they've obviously just been duped into opening the door by one of the girls. So the cops further the matter, as they did and as they threatened to. They continue to threaten to escalate the matter if the girls don't come to the door. And again, this is a constitutional right to not answer the door. As it turns out, in one of the recent filings that was sealed containing sensitive information, it actually mentions something about the civil rights council from the school from the university of idaho wondering if it's going to be something about these incidents there's also a brady notification in the case so prosecution has made the defense aware that there is a cop that has a internal affairs review or some sort of investigator on the case has an internal affairs case and they have notified defense of this i wonder if this has something to do with these cops as well your friend's behavior Make sense? Okay, thank you so okay. much. You want to get a good phone number for her? Yep. And just remember, the Dean of Students Office probably will be contacting you about this as well. Okay. About student code of conduct issues. Yes, I have it. What's the telephone number for you? Louisiana. Of Here's your ID back. Thank you so much. Any, any questions? No questions. Okay. Make sure your friends don't put you in a bad position. Tell them it's I time know. to be done. I'll okay. Go. There's like no one in there. Yeah. That was not smart. Not and don't tell me this yeah. isn't a fucking off-campus sorority yeah. house. Yeah, 100%. 100%. A bunch of fucking idiots. If I have to, I'll just start running plates and attach yeah. all of them. I was seriously doing the same thing. Take it all to campus back. Have a nice day. <laughs> they threw a big-ass party with underage drinkers, and they all left and wouldn't come to the door, so they're uncooperative. Yep. Here are the names of the people who were there. The Gonzalez family is questioning whether the investigation is being handled properly by Moscow police, especially within the first 48 hours after the murders. Their attorney spoke to News Nation's Chris Cuomo. From the get-go, we still get more and more information every day about mishaps or missteps that I think the investigation has made. You know, one of the questions we asked when we went in was, why not, within the tw first 24 to 48 hours, release some information about, we're looking for someone that may have missed work, that may have uh, come in with, you know, injuries to their forearms or their hands, things like that. It's a small, small community. Um, people that have taken a vacation immediately, things like that, that, that normal things that may be abnormal to people that live in the community and getting that out. Um, and they said they didn't do it because of an investigative reasons. Police continue to focus on the white Hyundai Elantra they believe was in the area of the house near the murders and are asking for tips related to the car.
Okay. Um, so I just looked for everyone that lived here, and they're not here right now. No one's here that. No one's here that lives at all. No one's here that lives. So here. everyone here's trespassing. Well, no one's here that's trespassing, but no one, no one that lives here is here right now. So where'd they go? They're just not here. I have no clue where they went. No clue. So you guys just throwing a party in 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 their house at this they time? Were here and at one point, they're not here right now. I just I they, just searched all the rooms. They left and went over to some other party, and everyone is about to I leave and go over to another party. Okay. Who does live here? What are their names? I am actually not sure. I live across the street. Okay. I just came over. Yeah. I haven't drank a drop. Male, female. Uh, I think it's mainly females. I think it's like four. Females. What sorority are they affiliated with? I um, don't know. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're associated with the. I don't know. So I guarantee you they're associated with the sorority. As many of them are living here. It's an off-campus campus sorority house. I've been a cop for 22 years here. I'm not stupid. Don't play dumb games with me. I'd rather deal with this as a noise complaint than getting a hold of the Greek Council and the Greek Board and all of that and the, st and the students and playing all these stupid fucking games. Do you? All I, I don't do know. Is I don't know. Because yeah. I guarantee us, you, there's a lot of underage drinking because they left their alcohol behind. Do you want us to try and get a name or a phone number yes. and if we can could. call someone? We just I, need to I talk don't... to somebody who lives here because okay. otherwise I have yeah. to be under the assumption. You guys are unlawfully entered because you, no one who lives here is here. Okay. Right? We'll, we'll go. We'll so go I need get to verify number. that there was a party here. We'll, no, everyone left. we'll go get a phone number. We'll be right back. Thanks, Sorry, guys. we're not trying to make your life. I understand. Yeah. I just letting you know this is how it's going to play out. I'm not Perfect. going anywhere until I talk no, to somebody. We'll be, we'll be right back. Right no you guys mind just leaving the door open for us? That way we can get yeah. some sort of communication between us no, and them. No, we're not going to come in. No, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I know I do. And hey, guys. Really, we're just coming here for a noise complaint. Okay, so no, we understand y'all drinking. The right? reason I, I apologize for no one coming to the door. It, the issue is we it, were trying okay. to find the Everyone's kind of freaked out because cops are here. You guys are having a good time, right? Well, I just, I mean, I've been at another house before and I went out and talked to the cops, yeah. but I wasn't. They're cold, too. Man. Yeah, these are cold. Woo. But that one was already open. All right, Josh. Jordan, you talk to them. Yep. Maddie. Uh, okay. Hi, this is Officer Walsh from Austin Police Department. Who am I speaking with? Just remind people that we can be fairly reasonable, but when people want to be dumb, we have a tendency to be assholes. In Idaho, the noise ordinance states that a law enforcement officer only needs to warn an individual who is in control of the premises where the noise is originating. So it doesn't matter whether the person is on the lease or actually lives there or not. This means if you're hosting a gathering or responsible for the property at the time of that noise complaint, an officer can issue a warning to you. You're expected to comply by reducing or stopping the noise. Or, of course, you could exercise your constitutional rights to not answer the door. But these cops would tell you they're not leaving and they're going to escalate the situation if you do that. Yep. Maddie. This is one of the... All right, can you hear me, Maddie? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Do you live at 1122 uh, Queen Street? Yes, I do. Okay. So, hey, the reason that we're here is that we received a noise complaint um, of loud music, partying, okay? Once we approached the, the house, uh, people started running away. Uh, they left a bunch of alcohol behind. We're not even coming for alcohol. We're coming for the noise complaint. And then we sat here for approximately 10 minutes trying to knock on the door. No one would come to the door until these two gentlemen came down and actually answered the door. So gotcha. right now, um, if I can, I would like to collect your information, your name, number, your date of birth. Uh, and I'm guessing, our, and I want your current address at, uh, also as well, okay? Yeah. yeah, sounds good. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. So, let me go ahead and what's your first name? Maddie? 
And how do you spell that, Maddie? My like legal name is Madison. It's M A D I S O N. What's your middle name, Madison? May M A Y. Okay. What's your last name? Mogen M O G E N. M O G E N. Yep. Okay. What's your date of birth, Madison? Zero one. Okay. Uh, and is uh, what's your current address? One one two two King Road. Okay. And are you a student at uh, U of I? Yep. Okay. I will graduate with a bachelor's. I'm studying my master's. All right, Madison. So here's the deal. Okay. They've already said that no one here lives at, uh, like, none of the, the occupants that live at this address are here right now. So now you have a house full of random people. Um, you need to let them know that the noise needs to needs to come down, okay? We just received a, a noise complaint. We want that music turned down. Um, and we don't want to come back again tonight. If we have to come back again tonight, then there's going to be even more problems, okay? I see both sides. Sounds good. I'm, I'm just frustrated. I'm also so sorry once again. Hey, I, I understand, okay? Uh, it's just, I mean, if, if I were you guys, I'd probably just come home and make sure that whoever is, is, is partying here is keeping it down to a minimum, okay? Um, yeah, we're going to all of them. Okay. So at this point, um, we're going to leave, okay? Uh, and again, if I have to come back later tonight, like I said, I, I just want to express that there's going to be some, uh, some citations given out, okay? Okay, it's very clear. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you enjoy your evening, all right? You too. Bye. All right, man. Cell phone number two. Okay. Hello, miss. Hello. What's your name? Zanna. Zanna, do you live here? Yes. Okay, did Megan talk to you earlier? I, no. Okay, does Megan live here? Megan, I do not have a Megan that lives Megan here. Megan Mogan? Maddie oh, Mogan, uh, yes. Madison Mogan, yes. Yeah. Madison Mogan? Okay, she does Sorry, live here. Sorry, we, she is at the club. She's 21. I'm just going to bed. I have a couple of friends over, but okay. this is my ID. Did, have you talked to Maddie tonight? Yes, I have. Well, She's at the cl corner club. Okay. Did she did she tell you anything about anything that happened earlier or anything like that? Honestly, not really. <clears throat> I'm I've just been here the past hour. Okay. Okay. Just trying to go to bed. Can and, I grab your ID for me? If you yeah, I'm her. not 21. I'm. Okay. My roommates are 21. I just came well, to go to bed. We're, we're not here for we're not here to talk about the alcohol stuff, okay? Okay, yeah. Um, but th this is the second noise complaint we've had here tonight within two hours. I'm sorry okay? about that. So this time it was the blonde gal and the guy on the back also, porch playing, playing music, okay? So I sincerely apologize about that. Okay. I, I'm just going to bed. Okay. So, so just so you understand, you could be getting a misdemeanor citation for this, which means you have to go in front of a judge and explain why you couldn't keep the people in your house quiet. Okay? We've already talked to Maddie once and told her the same thing. Okay? The only reason she's not getting a ticket is because she's not standing here in front of me. But I'm telling you right now, if we have to come back, you're getting a ticket. Okay, so you I'm will have to go right see a now. judge. I'm fine right now. You're not going to take right I'm now. I'm just trying to go to bed right okay. now. I mean, I I understand you guys. Mm -hmm. You're coming here. I'm I'm just going. To bed. Okay. Well, understand that you're responsible for the residents. Okay. So whoever else is here, if they have a safe way to get home, you need to kick them out okay. or tell them to come inside and be quiet. Okay. Because the houses that are on this hill all the way around here, we can hear you from 
clear down the road when we were coming up here, we could hear the music. Okay. And that's I'm so sorry. Where we're past sorry. the point of having polite conversations, okay? Because yeah. so neighbors sorry. are being kept up. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just yeah. like. Is the, the blonde gal and the guy up there, are they roommates too? I'm sorry, what? The, the blonde gal and the, the guy that's upstairs, are they roommates too? None of my roommates are home. I oh, okay. Okay. So, do, do you understand 100% understand. What, what's going to happen? I'm just going to tell everyone, get the f sorry. No, you're fine. Or figure yeah. it out. And, and I'm not saying that you got to tell everybody they have to leave, but I'm telling you, any outside music, any loud yelling needs to be done. Okay. Because we're not, next time you're getting a ticket. Okay. Okay? And if you get a misdemeanor citation, the university is not going to take kindly to it. Yeah. So, I, not only I do you have to go see a judge. I've never had to deal with this ever. Yep. And we don't want to start now. I don't ever remember having come here, so I understand you guys are having to get together, but people have a way of yes. taking the invitation and using it as an excuse to get out of control and be loud. Advantage. Yes, exactly. I okay. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I just I just hope for your sake that your friends don't put you in a position where yeah. you get the citation and you have to go to court to defend yourself yes. from your friend's behavior. Make sense? Okay. Thank you so okay. much. You want to get a good phone number for her? Yep. And just remember the Dean of Students Office probably will be contacting you about this as well. About student code of conduct issues? Yes, I have it. What's the telephone number for you? Louisiana. Of you guys are back? Thank you so much. Any, any questions? No yeah. questions. Okay. Make sure your friends don't put you in a bad position. Tell them I it's time know. to be done. I'll okay. Go. There's like no one in the Yeah. Room in the yeah. Room. It was the two that were around the back. We do anything last night. No worries. Na uh, neighbors are calling in again saying the music's good. Sure. Sounds good. I think that the tickets get expensive. We gotta come back out here. Yeah, the music keeps coming up and it's going to understand that. Yeah, we'll definitely turn it down. I mean, you're probably off, maybe. I understand. That's so fair. It's on the fair enough, guys. Make sure the price sure. stays down. Sure. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Take care, Have guys. Okay. Good, good luck. Good yeah, thank you. Good semester. And in some cases, like when we get here and that stereo is going, yeah. I would also go contact them because it was non specific. Sure. And if I'm warning them, I better go fucking warn them. Too. True. And is that that's the bottom row of the house there? Which one? Well, here? That yeah. one? That one's up on, uh, goes through that driveway, the guy's walking right there. Oh, yeah. That side there. <laughs> well, I saw that big, tall JBL on the back patio there, so I'll just go chat with them. Okay, I'll come with you. You want to walk up or do you want to? Uh, yeah, we'll walk up. Let's start things off. Just, it wouldn't be fair, you know, if you're one of these guys, you better warn them. Yeah, good point. Warn them. Moscow 11. So it's important to remember in this scenario, the officers received a generalized noise complaint. Without a specific address, they identified a frat house having a party and they addressed the noise issue with them. However, after leaving the frat house, the officers target the girl's home again, even though it was not specifically mentioned. In this footage, they somehow insinuate that their actions are going to be helpful to the girls. Is it helpful if I pull you over and warn you that you could possibly get a warning for a noise ordinance or a speeding ticket in the case that I pulled you over? Sorry, whatever. You know what I mean. No. It's not a favor. It's unwarranted targeting. These officers' decision to target the girl's home without any specific complaint or evidence of a noise violation. You can barely hear noise. The cops are the loudest thing at the home. This could constitute an absolute misuse of authority by approaching the girl's home without a valid reason after they've addressed their noise complaint. Infringement of their rights because the officers' actions in this scenario infringes the girl's rights to privacy and freedom from unwarranted government intrusion. I'm still on the department channel. Moscow 111. We're clear of 1127 King Road. We're going to be out at 1122 Queen Road. Same problem.
Hey guys, can you send someone out who lives here, please? Nope. Sorry, you can always call us later and ask in case it gets turned in here. It's our business line. Sweet, thank you. You bet. No one's coming to the door. Yeah, I looked, took one look at that speaker. I said, hmm. You get a lot of guys trying to argue private property access. The way I've always done it, and correct me if I'm wrong, was the way I did it there. Find one responsible, have everyone else hold them accountable. If I gotta come back here, they're getting the ticket. Because then it's on them to nip everyone else in the bud. Yeah, and if they don't come out, we just contact landlords. Yeah. Or we come back the next day or the next time you work. Yeah. And just note that you know, lack of cooperation does not go a long ways with us. <laughs> Or we come back the next day or the next time you work. Yeah. And just note that you know, lack of cooperation does not go a long ways with us. <laughs> Thank you. Huh, no stairs to the back deck. Interesting. This is actually a balcony and not a deck. That's okay though, no one's perfect. Is this your place? Yeah. Perfect. You know why we're here? Uh, I assume noise. Noise, yeah. Yeah. Are you speaking right there? Yeah. Nothing against having a party once neighbors start calling in that you have an issue? Fair. Uh, you know the school? Uh, yeah. Okay. From here? Senior. Senior. Okay. okay. So I'll tell you the same thing I told them. You probably know the drill, right? Actually, no. Oh, okay. So, usually, at least for me, I'll give you a verbal warning. Okay. Uh, once I have neighbors calling in, you're just too loud. You're disturbing the peace. Yeah. Nothing against having parties. Nothing against having people over who are over age to drink. Mm -hmm. But again, once we start disturbing the neighbors, then we've got an issue. Yeah. I always take it as up to 300. Yeah, somewhere around 300, 400 okay. bucks. It's a pretty expensive ticket. I don't want to give that to you. Yeah. That being said, this is your place, so I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh -huh. They get it more expensive the later it gets. <laughs> yeah. We already warned warn them, yeah. too, so. Um, and if I do have to come back here, uh, the 300 some dollar ticket's going to be away. Okay. And it only gets more expensive. Yeah, that's right. Okay.
Is this 11 22 here? Yeah. Okay. I'd much rather you spend that 300 bucks on beer or something fun. Yeah, yeah. A sticker, right? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. That being said, warnings, don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back in a few hours and then have to issue that. So, yeah. any okay. questions for me? No. All right. Have a great day. Take care. Casey, I'm just going to loop around up here. Hey there. Is this your placement? It is not. Okay, would you mind going and getting somebody she's who's placed this? Right oh, she is? You want to send her up back here? I apologize. We knocked at the front door, no one came. Yep, thanks, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I looked, took one look at that speaker. I said, hmm. The way I've always done it, and correct me if I'm wrong, was the way I did it there. Find one responsible, have everyone else hold them accountable. If I got to come back here, they're getting the ticket. Because then it's on them to nip everyone else in the bud because they yeah, know. They don't come out, we just contact land. <laughs> yeah. Stairs to the back deck, interesting. Stairs to the back deck, interesting. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, is this your place? Yeah. Perfect. Two of these cops wind up in Exhibit A of the Brian Koberger versus Idaho case. We could be looking at a conflict of interest here, especially considering the arguable misconduct that happens during the incidents at 1122 King Road with a lot of these officers and one being the sergeant, who everyone else is underneath the command of at nighttime and during the time of these incidents. Now, as it turns out, people have now been debating about this footage that has turned out to be right across the street from the victim's home, right during that window of opportunity when the tragedy could have occurred. These guys are doing more picking on students down the street. No. Hey, is that beer? What's up? Is that beer in your hand? Yeah, I'm 21. You got the ID on you? I uh, don't. No. Okay. I'll take it back to my apartment if you need. Okay. Uh, you got a driver's license? I don't have it. What? No, uh, in general. I yeah. do have one, yeah. What stays it through? I don't. I don't? Mm. Okay. So I'm just going to check if everything's good. Um, okay. Since they're not open, um, I'll let you hang on to them. Okay. So Will I get charged with anything? No. Or? No. Okay. Appreciate it. But it's just enough for me to stop, check, make sure you're 21, no walking yeah, around here in public.
Alrighty. Boss, go 77. Check one. What's that? Am I going to take off? Or? No, let me run this through okay. dispatch. Make sure you're extra 21 and give me a fake birthday or anything. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's the, I think that's the first one I've seen. Yeah. One. So if that comes back good. Yeah, you're, you're free to go. You, are these your boys? No, I don't know them. Okay. Yeah. You guys taking off on me? I didn't hear you, so yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we thought you were talking. You all three turned around, and I put my flashlight, and you said, hey, come here. You guys all turned around and walked away. I thought it was just, like, a fake person, honestly. Yeah. Like, how many, how many fake people are out here <laughs> that you've experienced? How's your night going? Good. Good. That's good. Let's try and stay warm. Is that y'all's car right there? Gas. They downgraded us from patrol cars. Gotcha. <laughs> they gave us hybrids to save on fuel. There you go. Smart move. Smart move. Touch. Let me know that that actually exists. Uh, I'll catch you this, alright? No worries. Why don't you guys all have a drink tonight? A couple of beers. Beers? Yeah. Hard liquor or anything like that? No. no. Come on, guys. Alright, if you guys all want to stand. Alright, Josh. Jordan, you talk to them. Yep. Maddie. Uh, okay. Hi, this is Officer Wilson, Austin Police Department. Who am I speaking with? Just remind people that we can be fairly reasonable, but when people want to be dumb, we have a tendency to be assholes. Can you hear me, Maddie? Than you could do absolutely nothing. Just we were running around for hours, just not knowing what was going on, what happened, because we found out by people calling us. And the sheriff showed up about three hours later. How do you feel that you you've been uh, restrained in any way uh, with this order? I think you're not seeing the. What, what the point is, what the point is, is that I the, court has is, the court has issued a non-dissemination order that restricts First Amendment rights that is overly broad. It's a, Your Honor, nothing precluded the prosecution from contacting uh, my clients well before I was representing them. They had almost three weeks to uh, contact them. Your or investigators have not asked for uh, interviews? I would so. This idea that they are going to be witnesses in this case is just an attempt by the prosecution to shut them up as well as to shut me up. And by the way, I, 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 people completely forget about this. But you, you were suggesting that, that it was entered to, to, to shut down the prosecutor's office. Why would they? That's claim, what you just said. I, I, I do think that part of the... Uh, that was part of the process, is that they understood that their, their investigation was getting out of hand. Too many people stipulated to it. Yes, I do. Okay, when you say they, you mean the prosecutor's yes. office? Yes, yes. All right. Indication that it's an isolated, targeted incident, and there is an individual... ...is an individual somewhere. Can you give us a reason as to why there's that belief there is a suspect? Is a suspect. 
And can you also uh, give a little more information on the force entry? There's no sign of force entry, but was the door, did it seem like any of the entries were left unlocked by any means? My uh, mind, we're not 100% sure if the door was unlocked, but there was no damage to anything and the door was still open um, when we got there. And, and my first question, if, yeah. you don't, if you'd like me to read. No, I, I, think, I, I think I haven't. Um, you know, in these cases, we take the totality of the things that we see, and they're, and they're very dynamic, right? And they're very big, and there's a lot of information. Any indication of a party at the home that night? Um, and I'm, this will be the last one, okay? I understand. Um, not that we know of, not at the home. Um, we know that the other, um, enough to ensure that um, nothing has gone unturned. We want to have um, the individual identified um, who is the suspect of this eventually. Um, so we are literally looking into every aspect of everything. And you guys have said repeatedly that there's no threat to the public, but we don't know who the suspect is. We don't know where he's at. How is there no threat to the public at this point? Well, that's kind of an unknown. Like I said, we took the information that we had at the time, um, but we do need to be aware the individual is still out there. Um, have, have we looked at any boyfriends or any ex-boyfriends, any spouses as a potential suspect? I will tell you, we are looking at everyone. Um, we are every tip we get, every lead we get. There's no one that we're not going to talk to. There's no one we're not going to interview. There's no one that we're not going to look in. In, in Lake Dock County, anything we ask for is, is given. Um, so at any time, if we need additional, all I have to do is, is call the colonel, and he will um, provide that. Um, he's already guaranteed me that, um, and I know the FBI um, has said the same thing. Hi, Emma Epperly from the Spokesman Review. Um, I know you've said you're not going to release who the 911 caller was, but um, was the killer the 911 caller? I will tell you no. Can you clarify, you said it came from the roommate's phone, but you didn't say the roommate made the call. So did the roommate make the call on the roommate's phone, or can you clarify if it was another individual made the call? Actually, if we could just go to this one first and... Well, the phone, that's what I want to see. This one first and... Well, the phone. So what I'll, I'll say to that is um, it was made from the roommate's call, or phone, excuse me, um, and we're not going to divulge who made that call. Um, to be, um, it's part of our investigation still, and when we get ready to release that, we will. The male subject whom the women called, um, has he been ruled out as a suspect or person of interest? Um, we have followed up on, we've cleared, and, and we... Um, believe that uh, there's no connection. NBC News, just following up on the, the 911 call, you said that you don't believe that's the killer. Uh, can you conclusively rule out the person that called 911 from inside the home as a suspect in this case? Can you go ahead and just ask that one more time, please? The, the, person, yeah, the, the person that was inside the home that called 911 uh, that was not one of the roommates, can you conclusively rule that person out as a suspect at this point? I don't think I said that it wasn't one of the roommates. I said that uh, it was used with the um, roommate's phone. I, I believe you, somebody asked if that was the killer, and you said no. No, it, that's correct. Was there someone there other than the two roommates when police responded to the home? So we... There was other friends that had arrived that had arrived um, at the location. How many? How many? And call. Honestly, I'm not quite sure at this time, to be quite honest. Quite sure at this time, to be quite honest. Do you still believe this was this was this attack was done by one perpetrator? And if so, how does one individual kill four people at night and not wake up the other two roommates? Our um, investigation will continue to look at all. Oh,